Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm recording this on a Sunday and I hope you're having a fantastic Sunday. As I open up the curtains this morning, the sun. Oh my goodness, do you remember that sort of red, round, well, yellow ball that used to sort of sit up there in the sky? Yeah, it was shining. It was shining. Well, these days it's not so much yellow. It seems to have changed its colour to more white. That is, of course, when we get a chance to see it, thanks to the geoengineering, the, the nonsense that they spray into the sky to make sure that we don't have the sunshine. And yet, at the same time, they tell us this nonsense that they, uh, of course, they need the sunshine to charge up all these electric cars that we're supposed to be buying instead of our diesel cars. Although, as we know, they don't really want us to have any cars at all because they want us to be stuck in these 15-minute cities. Although really and truly, they don't want us here at all because we're a bit of a useless eater. Which is why, of course, they're planning the Great Famine so that the useless eaters don't eat anything at all. Woohoo! There you go. Isn't it exciting? It's a very interesting world. Can you imagine just waking up and having a beautiful sunny day? You go out and enjoy yourself, perhaps go on a picnic or a walk in the countryside. You look at nature. You see the lovely farms all full of nice crops and all of that kind of thing. How boring that world would be, would it not? It's much more exciting, is it not, to wake up feeling a bit poorly under the weather, perhaps you've had a, a gammy leg, maybe you've just had a stroke or your partner's just dropped dead because they had a medical intervention recently. So much more interesting things to do. Perhaps you wake up because there's a big bang knock at the door and there's big sort of heavy set bloke saying we've come for money. Uh, you accidentally parked in the wrong place or you're a bit late with your income tax or you, you haven't done this or you haven't done that or actually we just targeted you because you know you just look vulnerable and so we just thought we'd have a go anyway. Uh, we could be scammers, we may not have any identification whatsoever to show that we actually work for a bailiff company or a debt collector or enforcement agent. We just want your money. Who cares? Isn't life much more exciting if that's the situation? I don't know. I thought the former actually would be quite pleasant. It would be just nice to have a nice quiet life. And I'm not saying it's impossible, because I think it is, because we're in a spiritual war and we've got the opportunity to sort of push all this away if we wake up and we decide to unite and just turn our backs on these dreadful governments, these organisations, these dark forces and corporate Britain. It's all in our hands. We just have to do something about it. Anyway, welcome to the Sunday show. As you can see, I am feeling a little bit better, although I'm still a bit squeaky with the old voice. Oh dear, what's going on? Although a few days ago, I couldn't even do that. So, you know, there's a little bit of improvement. Now, a number of people have sent in various remedies to me to say, get better, Richard. We need you. You're, you know, working very hard for us. It's very kind. Thank you very much. Not that the detractors think that, of course. I think they're going, oh, Richard's going under. He'll soon be six foot pushing up daisies. Yeah. No chance of that, mate. Um, not yet, anyway. Anyway, somebody's been, um, a couple of people, as I say, recommended this. Um, now, I thought hydrogen peroxide, thank you very much to the person who sent this in. Um, I thought hydrogen peroxide, and if I just zoom in in here, you can probably, hang on, I wonder if you can read that. There we go. I thought that was hair dye. I thought you shoved in a bit of hydrogen peroxide if you were, you know, going blonde or something, or you used a bit of that before you sort of dyed your hair in to give yourself a blue rinse, which, um, where I live, down on the south coast, used to be the thing some years ago. It's a bit of competition now from the lovely Julia, of course, uh, not a blue rinse, but she has beautiful purple hair, which I, of course, um, adore. Um, but yes, uh, so hydrogen peroxide, colloidal silver. I mean, so many people have sent in so many different things, all sorts of little lotions and potions. Try this, Richard. Try that. Whatever you do, do not take any of the uh, stuff you buy in the chemist or in the supermarket under the medicines cabinet. That, so don't panic. I don't have any of that nonsense whatsoever, thank you very much. I don't use those white pills. I certainly don't. I do take a few supplements, of course, a bit of vitamin D, a bit of magnesium, a bit of iodine, vitamin C, of course, all of that kind of good stuff. But I don't take any of those, you know, things with side effects. Oh, golly, who wants the side effect of 
being ill, for example, iller than you were when you first started, which does seem to be what happens these days if you go to a GP. Anyway, we were talking about the government and the nasty sort of snidey sort of things and the ridiculous nature of the government. And I've got a few things to say about all of this. But um, I want you to have a look at this. I I couldn't resist this. Uh, People have been sending me this. Thank you so much for sending me this nonsense that's now coming in by the government. Oh, yes, the gov.gov. Here we go. Um, It's the bird flu thing. It's raising its ugly head again. (laughs) Yes, and we'll see why, and it's not just in this country, but look at this. This is bonkers. New measures now to protect poultry industry from bird flu. Oh, yes. Did you not know? Somebody should tell uh, the government, birds do fly. You know, I've seen them. I've seen them. They used to flew uh, past my house. Yes, that's what birds do. They fly. You know, birds flew once upon a time, in the sky. Hmm. Uh, but no, apparently, new registration required to keep bird keepers in Great Britain, all bird keepers, that is, I guess that's pigeon fanciers as well, mm, nice pigeon, uh, must register their birds and update their records accordingly. And the thing is, if you buy a chicken, that's the thing, if you buy a chicken, you've got to register that chicken, even if it's just one, apparently, Just one chicken, and you've got to put the reason for having that chicken. New measures to better protect the poultry section from future avian influenza outbreaks have been set up by the government. Now, that's on the 9th of March, doesn't give us the year, but um, people keep telling me all of this. Under the changes announced, there will be new requirements for all bird keepers, um, regardless of the size of flock, to register their birds. This is um, this is madness. This is madness. So if you've got a chicken, let's say you've got a little in your garden because you just want some eggs. You know, who doesn't want an egg? After all, those eggs turns out sort of a bit like the old tobacco thing. Turns out that there's something in an egg like there is something in tobacco, which sort of... Um, doesn't help the old medical intervention do what the dark forces want it to do, namely... Ugh, that thing we're not allowed to say of course but the the oh, that thing that everybody thought was actually supposed to help them turns out uh, that's the kind of opposite but if you've had that in there then maybe you would want a nice go to work on an egg but no no you uh, you might not be able to do that because bird flu ooh, um is going to be coming along And so you've got to register your chicken. So if you've got a chicken, and let's say you call your chicken, chicken licking. uh, No, let's say you call your chicken, I don't know, Roger. Roger the chicken. You've got one chicken. All right, Rog. Um, Lay a little egg for me, Rog. Have you done one? That's not an egg. You've got to register it now. And so the government will now, you know, you know what it's like. You register, you give title away. It means that the government do own that chicken then because effectively you're just giving them access to your chicken i wouldn't um i wouldn't recommend doing that really because it's kind of like giving everything away all the time why do we listen to these people why are we um letting those people who are supposed to be our servants they forget that don't they they forget that they're our servants we we um elect them uh or we vote them in i suppose we acquiesce and we allow this body of people to um basically beat us with sticks why do we do that? Why are we letting these people continually bash us down? And going, yes, now, what evil plan can we do to keep them subdued? Oh, I know. Let's get them. We'll make out there's this sort of thing that the birds from the sky and um, it'll all pass to humans and all die in horrible agonising. Uh, so what we'll do, of course, is we will um, get them to register their chickens. <coughs> yes. It isn't. It is complete nutter bonkers. These people are completely mad. They're power mad, and of course they want to get shot of us. And every, but they're all, you know, not just the government, but the people behind the government who are leaning on the government, who have the uh, the government under their thumb because they have certain photographs of certain young people in certain uncompromising, you know, what positions. So they have to sort of acquiesce to all of this. Otherwise, oh, it'll all be out. And as you noticed, many of the old MPs are stepping down now because uh, the pressure is too much because you can't hide the bodies for too long. And eventually all of this corruption 
is coming out. Have you noticed that? Oh, yes, it's getting a bit hot in here in, under Parliament. I think that's because, really and truly, they know it's over. They know that it is over, that too many of us have woken up. The problem was, here's the problem, they, uh, they gave us the internet. They, uh, now, they had to give us the internet because they wanted to bring in this digital nonsense to keep us, you know, um, have digital IDs and CBDCs so they could control everything in our lives. But the internet had this one problem for them, which was it gave us this. People could sit there and talk and communicate to one another in all sorts of different things and wake up. And perhaps they did. Perhaps they thought, no, no, people will just still just listen to BBC, mainstream media, and we'll just go, oh, I'm too thick to do anything else. And maybe some people are a bit like that. But more and more people are actually finding that their noggin is still working, no matter all about the, the child, um, the, the going to school and being brainwashed. Foo, foo, foo. Many of us are beginning to wake up to see the ruse. And the MPs are beginning to realise, do you know what? We've got to get out of this because this is too grim. The has uh, caused um, a lot of stirring and people are angry. They know where we live. They may come after us. And who knows when things get a little bit tough and there's no food in the supermarkets uh, because they've been uh, geoengineering the skies to try and prevent the fields from growing the plants. People may start going, well, whose fault was this? Who's all this is? Who made us register our chickens? Bark, bark. Yes. We know who they are. And, of course, they're really, the government and all of these nonsense people, they're just the middlemen because the dark forces behind them, who, as we said, with the photographs and you know, various things, um, they're the ones we really got to get to. Anyway, never mind all that. That's just uh, me pontificating a complete nut of waffle. It's nonsense. This show is just light entertainment. That's all it is. I wouldn't take anything that I say terribly seriously. Of course... Anyway, um, so that's the thing you've got to do with your chicken. Um, and um, not only is it affecting chickens, but look at this somebody sent me. Thanks to Jill, by the way, who sent this in. Here we go. This is um, a, a channel you might be interested in. Um, there is a, a nationwide raw milk ban in America. Not in the UK, but uh, in the States. Because of this H5N1. Oh, and do you know what H5N1 uh, it's a highly pathic, uh, pathogenic avian influenza thing. Uh, again, it's back to the old bark, bark, the old flying things in the sky with the wings and things. Um, and of course, the nonsense is all about that. Oh, well, this will pass to humans and and give us too much trouble. If actually. The thing that passes on to humans is those people in authority at the moment who do not listen to the ordinary, everyday, common sense people who are saying, you're mad. You're mad and, and we, we're going to get shot of you because we don't need you, basically. That's, that is it. Because you're, you really, we know your game and your game is to wipe us all out. So, um, yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? Anyway, so that was that. Um, which I hope you enjoyed a little bit of that. So I'd be um, very wary, very wary about the government and their plan to ban their chickens and to stop raw milk. Of course, we know that raw milk in this country, if you can still buy it, which you can, and I drink it, and look what's happened to me. I'm barking mad already. Perhaps that's a reason not to have it. Um, there are plenty of places to get it. I interviewed a chap called John Cook, lovely bloke in Wiltshire, Dora's Dairy, um, and he said in his video, and it's on the channel here somewhere, he said, I am the only raw milk supplier in Wiltshire. And Wiltshire's a big county. He said, I can't keep up with the orders. Everybody wants raw milk because the good bacteria, as we're beginning to realise, is good for the body. It keeps us healthy. And uh, I've got a book called The Untold Story of Milk, and in the 30s, when old Louis Pasteur was putting forward his uh, concept of uh, um, heating up the milk and killing off all the bacteria, when they were saying, oh, yes, this bacteria is terrible, when, of course, that's all just rubbish, um, it was uh, that people were put on raw milk diets. Raw milk diets for, like, 30 days. Some people were put on it for six months. Some people were on it a year. They didn't eat anything else but raw milk, and they thrived. All their skin was perfect. They thr it's, I mean, you know, just leave us alone, government. Uh, and actually, what we should be wary about is voting anybody in at all, at any time, uh, because 
you just mess the plate. We don't really need it, do we? I mean, ultimately, I think they've made such a stink of everything that we could do it ourselves. The fact that uh, they allow this geoengineering going on in the sky, the fact that they believe in the myth of global warming, the fact that they think that it's a good idea to have just one power source, say electricity, and we will put solar panels on farmland, which, by the way, degrades the topsoil of the farmland, great swathes of the countryside covered in this sort of nonsense, which is uh, then turns that farmland into brownfield sites and no doubt then no able, not able to grow anything. It's all mad. It's all mad. We don't need these sort of people. Not for us, not for the not for the new generation that is now here. We've got to help people get back to health. We've got to help people have reason and uh, means to live and common sense, critical thinking, question everything and everything that comes out of uh, places like number 10. Turn it the other way round because we know that they just spout their lies and they are not here at all to help us. We know this. We've got to put an end to it, haven't we?